Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture of Two-Face Flow. My name is Ming Chang Li. I am currently a faculty at the Department of Power and Mechanical Engineering in National Tsinghua University. Per the request from the university, I'm recording and sharing this lecture for the NTHU Open Course Weather Project. The topic of this lecture is phase stability and homogeneous nucleation. At the molecular level, thermodynamic properties in nanoscale control volumes may fluctuate due to the random motion of molecules. This is different from the assumption in microscopic analysis for fluids. In that case, properties are well defined at each point in space. This difference is especially important to the onset of boiling or condensation because the typical sizes of nucleation sites are on the order of few nanometers or even less. First, let's examine the phase stability and the phase transitions by looking at the van der Waals model. Notice that this is a simplified model, but it can help us to understand the main physics related to the phase transitions. The figure on the left shows a typical spin nodal line for a fluid. The blue dashed line is a curve of pressure versus specific volume described by the van der Waals model. The figure on the right is based on the figure on the left, but is a pressure versus chemical potential version. For now, let's just focus on the left-hand side figure. From statistical thermodynamics, it can be shown that for intrinsic phase stability of a pure system, the necessary and sufficient conditions are that first, the specific heat must be a positive value, and second, the derivative of pressure versus specific volume must be negative. Since the first one is a virtually true for all substances, the second criterion, also called the criterion of mechanical stability, is a sufficient and necessary condition for the stability of phase. According to this criterion, in addition to the subcooled liquid and the superheated vapor regions, it is expected that a single phase fluid would also possibly exist in partial regions inside the vapor dome. These regions are called as the metastable regions on this figure. Note that in the metastable states, the liquid is superheated and the vapor is supersaturated or can also be called as supercooled. Also note that states in these two regions are actually single phases in a non-equilibrium condition. At point C and point E, the value of partial P, partial V at a constant T becomes positive. These two points are therefore the limits of intrinsic stability. The red line is called the spin nodal curve Note that the speed nodal curve is different from the saturation curve. The region inside the speed nodal curve is inaccessible since these states violate the criterion of mechanical stability. By using the Gibbs two hand equation and integrate it along an isotherm starting from point A, the curve of chemical potential versus pressure can be plotted corresponding to the PV curve just shown. Again, the AB section is the subcooled liquid, BC is superheated liquid, EF is supercooled vapor, and FG is superheated vapor. The portion from C to E is inaccessible. It is worthwhile to point out that point B and F are actually coincided. This is expected since we have shown that for the liquid and the vapor phases at equilibrium on a flat interface, the chemical potentials should be equal. Also note that the locations of C and E denote the limits of superheated liquid and supercooled vapor respectively. Point A is in the subcooled liquid region and point G is in the superheated vapor region that we have defined in classical thermodynamics. Later on, we will use this figure to discuss the metastable regions in more details. The possible new information to be noted again is the metastable regions. 
According to our discussion, superheated liquid or saturated vapor are allowable states inside the vapor dome. Analysis based on classical thermodynamics usually assume that phase transition occur at the equilibrium saturation conditions. For the onset of phase transition from liquid to vapor, it means the nucleation shall start exactly at point B on the figure showing again on the right. However, in real systems, bubble formation within superheated liquid or droplet formation within supersaturated vapor is generally observed in experiments. This means the actual onset of phase transition occurs within the metastable regions. As shown by the figure on the left, bubble formation completely in a superheated liquid or droplet formation completely within a supersaturated vapor is called homogeneous nucleation. The formation of an embryo of vapor bubble or liquid droplet in liquid at metastable states can be explained by the fluctuation of local density and energy in the molecular scale perspective of a system. The deviations of molecular density from the mean value in a liquid near the saturation condition may result in the localized density close to that of saturated vapor. Therefore, it is possible to have small embryo bubbles of vapor formed within the liquid near the saturation condition. From the Young-Laplace equation, we should also immediately notice that the pressure inside the vapor bubble is higher than that of the surrounding liquid. An example for illustrating the significance of this pressure difference is provided here on the right. From our previous discussion, we have concluded that for a spherical vapor bubble to be at equilibrium to its surrounding liquid, it is required that PV minus PL equals 2 sigma over R, where R is the radius of the bubble. This requirement corresponds to the mechanical equilibrium and the usage of the Young-Laplace equation. The other two requirements are TV equals TL and same chemical potentials for vapor and liquid. By using the Gibbs-Duhem equation again, and assuming the vapor bubble follows the ideal gas law, chemical potentials for the liquid and the vapor phases can be obtained. Then, by requiring that the chemical potentials for a liquid and the vapor phases must be same, a relation for the vapor pressure inside the bubble at the equilibrium can be obtained. Note that since PL is less than PSAT at the TL, for a superheated liquid, PV must be less than PSAT according to this equation inside the red box. By using the Young-Laplace equation, an equation for RE may be derived. Rearranging these equations, the pressure of the vapor bubble can be derived. In addition, since in most cases, PV minus PSAT is much smaller than 2 sigma over Re. The equation can be further simplified with approximation. It is concluded that PVE must be less than PSAT. Referring to the figure on the right, state alpha denotes a superheated liquid. The vapor state corresponds to an equal value of chemical potential is at point beta, which is a superheated vapor. Therefore, for a bubble of finite radius, equilibrium can be achieved only if the vapor is superheated relative to its saturation state. The next question of interest would be that if this embryo formed can attain a stable equilibrium with the surrounding superheated liquid, the change in Gibbs free energy associated with the bubble formation is shown as this first equation on the top. Then, apply the Taylor's series about R equals Re. The change in delta G corresponding to small changes of radius about Re can be estimated and plot as the figure shown here. Clearly, 
there is a local maximum of this delta g at r equals r e. In the limit of r e approaches zero, there should be no change in the Gibbs free energy corresponding to the formation of bubble. Thus, delta g at this limit should be zero. In the other limit that r goes to infinity, all superheated liquid would undergo transition to superheated vapor. Therefore, the Gibbs free energy of the system decreases and the delta G should be negative. Also, note that the Gibbs free energy must be at a minimum for a stable equilibrium. Therefore, a bubble of radius R equals Re is in an unstable equilibrium. This means that if an embryo bubble of radius less than Re is formed in a metastable superheated liquid, the bubble is likely to collapse. If a bubble embryo has a radius greater than Re, it tends to grow rapidly. The Young-Laplace equation used in the present analysis relies on the assumption of mechanical equilibrium at the liquid vapor interface. If the mechanical force, for example, the pressure, changes too rapidly, so the mechanical equilibrium may not be maintained, a better assumption would be that the values of chemical potential in the two phases are equal. A good example to this situation is the cavitation process. This yields a modification of equation 5.80 in the textbook. However, the characteristics of the vapor bubble stability are basically the same with our previous discussion. So far, the theory suggests that the homogeneous integration will occur depends on the kinetics of the vapor embryo formation process. If a vapor embryo is continuously obtaining molecules due to evaporation, the embryo grows. If it is losing molecules due to condensation through the interface, it shrinks. In fact, the bubble will eventually grow or collapse depends on the difference between the rates of evaporation and condensation. If at equilibrium, the rate of condensation will balance the rate of evaporation. On the other hand, if these two rates are not equal, then the bubble should grow or collapse. For a superheated liquid, the liquid vapor interface of the embryo is not expected to be at a stable equilibrium, especially near homogeneous nucleation threshold. This means that the size of embryos would change. Here, define Jn as the excess number of embryos of size n that change to size n plus 1 due to evaporation over the number of size n plus 1 that pass to size n due to condensation. In other words, Jn is the net flux of the number of embryos in size space from n to n plus 1. Assume the number distribution is steady and using the kinetic theory of gases, an expression for Jn can be derived as to be shown on the next slide. Typically, a change of 1 degree C of temperature can change J by as much as 3 to 4 orders of magnitude. As J increases, the probability that the embryo will exceed critical size Re and grow increases. With a suitable choice of the threshold value of J, a corresponding temperature for the kinetic limit of superheat can be estimated. This temperature is the threshold that, once the liquid is superheated above this value, homogeneous nucleation will likely occur almost immediately or say spontaneously. A value of the threshold J for the kinetic limit of superheat is suggested to be 10 to the 12th for many organic fluids as described 
in the reference book. Here is an example provided in the reference book about the application of the theory we have just discussed. Note that the superheat limit temperature predicted by using this method is about 308 Celsius for water under 180 M. This value is significantly higher than that observed from experiments. However, as will be shown later, this model works well for many types of organic fluids. From the reduced forms of the van der Waals and riddich quang equations of state, and the discussion of the theoretical solution for a superheat limit, a relation for the spin nodal limits can be derived as shown by equation 5.110 in the reference book. Figure 5.11 shows a comparison of the theoretical spin nodal limits by using van der Waals and riddich quang relations versus experimental data for some fluids. It shows that a liquid can generally be superheated to more than 80% of its critical temperature before the spin nodal limit is reached. This means that to make stable evaporation of such liquid at a given pressure, the temperature has to be raised much higher than its saturation temperature. It is also seen that the riddich quang equation gives a better consistency than that from the original van der Waals equation. Plotting the values for J versus the temperature of a liquid results in curves like those shown on figure 5.12 in the reference book. If J equals 10 to the 12th is taken as the threshold for reaching the kinetic limit as we previously discussed. For organic fluids shown here, such as ethanol and methanol, the measured superheat temperatures agree well with the predicted values by using equation 5.110. Therefore, choosing J equals 10 to the 12th as the threshold for the kinetic limit over superheat seems to be reasonable for this kind of fluids. However, as previously noted, the predicted superheat limit for water is about 300 degrees C at atmospheric pressure by using this model. This is significantly different from the value determined experimentally, which is between 250 and 280 degrees C. Here is a summary of this lecture. We have discussed about the concept of the metastable state and its relation with the phase stability as well as the phase transition then, we explained the definition of homogeneous nucleation and the, the kinetics for the formation and the growth of vapor bubble embryos. Finally, we introduced the methods for estimating the superheat limit by using the van der Waals and riddich quang equations, or by the net flux of embryo size change. These theories and the methods can help us to understand the physics and the making predictions for a fluid undergoes homogeneous nucleation process.